Hey guys, so I came across a really cool product that I wanted to share. Balance paralysis is a very common problem that most computation students will encounter when they first hear about stacks. Given an expression just different type of parenthesis, you have to evaluate whether the expression is valid or not. Well, the solution is pretty simple and involves us using a stack. When you encounter an open parenthesis, push it in. When you encounter a closed parenthesis, pop the last element that you inserted and compile them. If they are the same, well, then you can continue further. If they are different, well, the uh, expression is actually invalid. This way you make sure that the la latest closed parenthesis will always correspond to the most recently added open parenthesis. So, here is a little twist. What is the minimum number of things required to make an invalid expression valid? By changes, I mean you can update any parenthesis to any other. You cannot delete or add, but you can only update. Here are two examples. You can take a pause and understand the question better. Let's try a greedy approach. Once I encounter an invalid close parenthesis, I will make it as a valid one. If I end up with extra open, I will change half of them. But you can actually solve the same example in just one change. You can notice that picking the best at a certain point will not guarantee you the best solution. That is because you will never know what is the best place to end a particular open parenthesis. It might be better to keep an open parenthesis open and close others first and in some cases you might want to close it first itself. So you have to consider all possibilities. So a greedy approach will not work. So what can I do now since the greedy solution will not work? Well you have to generate all possible valid solutions and then compare them into a given expression one by one and determine the one with minimum changes. But this takes a lot of operations and we can obviously do better. Let us make few observations first. In a valid expression, we know that every opening parenthesis will have its ending. And this path will divide the expression into one or two segments. And we can check for the validity of each segment independently once again. For example, this is how this particular valid expression is divided. We can also make another observation. If an opening parenthesis appears inside a particular segment, corresponding close parenthesis will also appear inside the same segment and not outside of it. Well, but why is this useful? We know for a fact that index 0 is definitely an open parenthesis and it should definitely end somewhere as well. So we can try out all of its possible endings one by one. It's the index 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. That is because a particular segment can only be in even length. It cannot be odd in length. If it is odd in length, then it means some parenthesis is open and is left without a closing parenthesis inside a particular segment. Let's take an example. We'll first fix the starting point as a leftmost index. And after that, we'll fix an ending to the starting point and we'll form a segment. We can split the remaining into segments and solve them separately. Now that we have split the expression into two parts, we can notice that once again we can do the same for the right branch. And since the left expression is empty, we will return 0. By this way, we can keep track of all the cost of the changes we do throughout and that will be the answer for that particular configuration. Since we do not care about the actual configuration, we do not store it. And after we are done exploring, We'll go back to the initial root and then we'll fix a different ending point for this particular leftmost index. By this way, we'll go over all possibilities of starting and ending points. If the recursion feels a little bit unintuitive, you can see that nothing changes even if our current good is actually a 
branch of another root node. Let's collect our thoughts and write a final algorithm. We will be solving a particular expression which goes from the index L to R. Obviously, L should be the starting point because it is the first index. So we take it as a start. Then we assume it ends at L plus 1, L plus 3, L plus 5 and so on. At each L comma n, we have to calculate the cost to make L comma n a valid pair. After that, it gets split into two segments. The segments that start from L plus 1 and ends at n minus 1 and others starting from n plus 1 till all. We need the minimum of all such answers as well. So we initialize minimum to infinity and then update it once we get the better answer. And we have to calculate the answer for other two segments as well. After all this, we will finally return the minimum cost. But this still runs in exponential time complexity. So we apply once again a real good programming concept. Suppose n is the size of the expression. L comma uh, can only have at most n square different values, which means there can only be n square states for this particular function, such as f of 0, 1, f of 0, 2, and so on. Instead of computing it every time over and over, once we, comp once we have computed a particular segment, we can store that answer. To calculate each state, we iterate only once. So the time complexity just goes down from exponential down to n cube. So I hope this video was fun and informative. Having no experience in animating, it took a lot of effort to prepare this. So if you can, please share your criticism and appreciation so I can prove myself. Thank you.